What is going on, guys? Welcome to the Game is for Life podcast, where each and every Saturday we discuss all things games, usually. Uh, today's a bit different because it's an E3 yeah. special episode, so we're releasing here on Monday. Uh, but I'm your co-host, Jarrell, with me is my... Uh, I'm your co-host, Jarrell, with me is my co-host, my right-hand man, my ABXY, Arthur. What's up, man? Uh, doing good. It's a little hot. Summer's here. And yeah. Summer has come to California. It, <laughs> it took a while, but it's here. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to it. <laughs> I know I usually joke about hot guy summer, but that involves a lot of fucking sweating. Yeah, <laughs> yeah hot guy summer isn't so hot uh, uh, as far as this interest at all. So uh, <laughs> most definitely. Uh, but uh, we wanted to give you guys a special episode here today. We didn't have one this last Thursday because E3 of 2021 has been a muck, has been going on here. And uh, it's one of those things where uh, it's, you know, we usually wait for it all year, right? Wait for it for most of, you know, throughout the year before the holidays, obviously June's a big time. And um, just to just to briefly kind of go over a little bit, Arthur, as far as like how you felt E3 was in totality so far, because it's not over yet, right? Yeah. At the time of recording this, we're halfway through. Yeah. At the time of recording this, it's like Sunday afternoon. Um, so again, like just calendar date wise, it's halfway through. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Very true. So, uh, so as far as just uh, E3, I mean, what were your so far? What are your thoughts on E3? Obviously, it's different because it. Compared to a normal E3 yeah. and compared to a COVID E3 or say like the showcases that happened last year, different stuff, right? So, I mean, uh, of course, we don't want to give away too much as we go through the list here. This is a special episode, by the way. We're not doing uh, we're not doing little mini news stories up to Big Tuna. We're just talking about E3. Yeah. Um, because that's all that's that important is, right now. That is the news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that is exactly, that is the news. And that's why you're getting this episode on Monday. Yeah. Um, but just, if, if you were to, if you were just to briefly describe E3 so far, what are your thoughts? Um, and you can back me up on this. This is not biased. This is just <laughs> an honest opinion. It's been a total failure except for Microsoft. <laughs> It's been, again, I know I've listed many non-biased, <laughs> non-biased opinions towards Microsoft, towards Microsoft and, and Phil Spencer, but it's been a total failure. <laughs> it's been so boring. Uh, it was so boring. And then Microsoft finally gave us, cause first of all, Microsoft is the only one that actually had a fucking con like a proper conference. Yeah. Um, we'll talk more about it. Gearbox was like. Fuck, let me just interview <laughs> random people for 15 minutes and drag celebrities out of their, out of their trailer to talk about shit they don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. And then, uh, and then Ubisoft is like, fuck it, we'll give them screensavers. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been not great. Yeah. Um, yeah. At the time of recording this, I didn't watch it, but you did I, I, with Square Enix. Mm -hmm. uh, so I can't speak to that. Mm. But. Um, pretty much at the time recording this, um, Sunday, Microsoft slash Green X has finished their stuff. Yeah. So, um, yeah. so again, so we won't, you know, we, so even though this drops Monday, of course we won't be speaking of that stuff. Yeah, no, exactly. Exactly. And yeah, I have some words definitely today or as far as for E3. My and... word is failure. <laughs> And I, I don't think you're wrong. I don't think you're wrong. <laughs> so uh, bad. There's, yeah, there's just a lot of weirdness. But to, to continue on, of course, we'll we'll talk more about that that weirdness and failure. Uh, yeah. But during this E3, you know, shabam, we uh, had kind of like a fun little bingo thing. Yeah. Right? We were talking about the bingo thing. Uh, and then, you know, Haley was kind of working with me on it. So shout out to Haley. Um, Thanks. You know, and uh, we'll have to have you again on the episode soon or on the show soon. Um, but, uh, as far as for the bingo, you know, we had a couple, uh, a couple pop outs here. Unfortunately, we didn't get an official bingo. I was going to say, I think it could have gone better. Yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah. I'm, I'm losing. <laughs> <laughs> Cause well, to, I be, could, fair, to I, be fair though, uh, Nintendo hasn't gone yet. Yeah. And a lot of my stuff, a lot of my stuff was based on the fact that this is a new type of E3. Yeah. So I had like a lot of Zoom stuff. I had tech issues. I had, and a lot of my stuff was Nintendo. Yeah. Like that's a, true. a lot of my stuff was Nintendo. I have a cat and she, <laughs> and she just found out we have a new table. So you're going to go over there. Um, 
Yeah. So yeah, so you're you're doing better than me. <laughs> As of right now. Yeah. No worries. I can, yeah. If I can hit all my Nintendos, I'm good. Yeah. If you hit your <laughs> Nintendos, you might in fact have a have a bingo. It's funny because for one of mine, and then we'll we'll show the the bingo list the the, the bingo yeah. board here. As we're talking in post, but, um, you know, back for blood, for example, it was like the wording that I did, like didn't oh, yeah. get me that official, that official square. But if I just said back for blood, like they announced a date and, you know, and all this stuff, like I probably would have got the square, but I just put back for blood open beta available on, uh, to play on PC, which no, it's not right now. <laughs> Yeah, it, like, no. a lot of our, like, we've had guesses that are, like, super close. Yeah. But not. Yeah. <laughs> like, I forget what was, an, I forget what was, an, I forget what was another one. But, but yeah, again, same thing. Like, mm. I'm, as of the, the fact that E3 is halfway over, and, and again, no one's had a pet on a Zoom call. Mm -hmm. I'm still surprised I haven't hit that yet. <laughs> yeah, because we've had a couple of like quasi. Mine, show, mine showed up. <laughs> that's, that's all exactly. it takes. Exactly. That's all, that's all it no, takes. No, that's a really good point. That's all it takes is a cat just jumping on the table. <laughs> and it hasn't happened yet. Yeah. No, <laughs> no that's, a really, that's a really good point. Yeah, so we'll see. I mean, again, you know, it, it Nintendo thing hasn't happened yet. Uh, there's going to be the E3 awards, which I don't think we're going to get a, a pet by then. We might. Um, but we shall see. Uh, and then, of course, just to, to give the specifics here on the regular uh, to do housekeeping before we start on the mm. list here for E3 going directly into it. Uh, here on the Games for Life podcast, we read the news while you can watch what you choose or listen to what you choose by clicking on the uh, the time codes within the description of the episode. Uh, so if you're on YouTube, you know, first of all, like and subscribe. We would love to have you, you know, uh, know about the, the notifications for the podcast and everything. We'd love to have you as a subscriber. Please do that. Uh, but in the description of the episode, click on the hyperlinks for the segment that you want. Uh, then also follow the podcast on any application of your choice if you are listening to it. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, if, or if you just want to listen to the whole thing or watch the whole thing, feel free to do that as well with us here on the Gamers for Life podcast. And Arthur, we're going to we're going to jump right in E3 2021 so far. Uh, we're going to start mm -hmm. out with the Ubisoft pre-show. Now, for those of you who checked it out, thank you. Jumped in a bit. I know. I know. <laughs> For those of you who jumped in, watched it a little bit, we did do a couple of E3 live event streaming things, yeah, which is pretty fun, you know, regardless of the result, which we'll talk about in a few minutes here. Uh, but we did do that, and, you know, we started off with an Instagram, live Instagram thing, uh, so we did that. So starting off, just jumping in here, Ubisoft pre-show, man. Um, I, and I guess I am not accustomed to... Ubisoft pre-shows because I remember Prime was talking about the chats he's like well it's kind of like this like for pre-shows and I was like really because like what the f what the fuck is going on <laughs> I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll let you, I'll let you finish. <laughs> <laughs> but, but like, as far as like, for me, like I, I like, I remember we were just watching random things like random stuff prior to one segment to the next. And like, there's just things that didn't make sense. First, we thought that it was going to go into something else. So we're like, so I was like, oh, okay, like maybe this will happen. But then like nothing <sighs> happened. It just turned into like screensaver mania. It, and what we mean by screensaver, we're not lying. There was like <laughs> five, there was a bunch of segments where it was a character of one of their games. Mm -hmm. uh, Valhalla was the first one mm -hmm. of a character to just walking forward for two minutes. Mm -hmm. And nothing happened. <laughs> Just, that's it. And then they do a segment of like, like, um, like diversity in Ubisoft or something. Mm -hmm. And then, and then bam, next to another character, just going forward for two minutes. <laughs> And then another thing, we're just like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> um, and even their actual segments, even their actual segments of quote unquote content mm -hmm. was shit. Yeah. I remember one of them was like a five minute of this one girl's LinkedIn brought to life. Oh yeah. Her fucking resume <laughs> of like, this is how she applied here. And now she does this. And 
Before that, she did this. I'm like, what? Are we are we gonna fucking <laughs> hashtag diversity? Like, I don't like. It. All, like this is again. This like, is great. This is great. It was, but it games, was like video games. <laughs> we're here. We're here for games. I'm not even joking. It's like at one point I thought we're they're gonna zoom call her fucking references. <laughs> like it was just. It was a resume brought to life. There's all these <laughs> animations where like she used to do this and now she did this and then she's gonna soon do this and I'm like. Thumbs up. I don't <laughs> fucking care. I don't fucking care. Like, uh, I really don't. <laughs> no one does. And even, yeah. and, and uh, you know, at least for us, for our feed, we had, mm. you know, because we had it on, um, on our Twitch. Yeah. No, the, no, the pre-show, pre-show was Instagram. Pre-show was yeah. on our, on our Instagram for life. Instagram. We went live there, mm -hmm. but we were still able to see the original feed of the, of the, the chat. Yeah. <laughs> And they're like, why are we watching this? What is happening? <laughs> what are we watching? Like a, the, 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 and the funny thing, too, just to kind of like preface this, the the YouTube chats, like, because uh, how we were streaming it, we were taking YouTube links and stuff and watching YouTube footage. But the chats on that are so funny. You can like, screenshot so much <laughs> shit, dude. People are like, what? Dude, like, people <laughs> were fucking getting, people were, were roasting hard oh my god it was so funny so freaking I'm her, funny dude i'm her people i'm her i remember someone was like he was like okay cool cool story um is this person in charge of making games because <laughs> again we like it's again we like learned her resume and her linkedin profile pretty yeah. much at working at ubisoft and spoiler she had nothing to do with working on games she was just in charge of people i don't know if she was pr but it's like now she's in charge of this team and delegation and i'm like so she's not a developer i don't care <laughs> yeah yeah like what in the actual fuck and is now the mind you this seems mean it went on way longer than it needed to. Yes. Like it did. way fuck. Like again, you, like again, you know, they're showing diverse states. You're gonna think, oh, this is so and so the worst of Ubisoft. Cool. Five minutes later, we're still talking about them. Ten minutes later, we're still fucking talking <laughs> about this person. Like, <laughs> yeah, it was it was it was awful. And, and it like was awful. and like you, I've never seen a developer pre-show mm -hmm. because I I usually try to watch. You know, because because to be fair, during E3, it's a lot. Yeah. And before doing this podcast, like as a fan, I'd go into it like I'm not going to watch everything. Mm -hmm. I'm going to watch like the three I want to, and then catch like the top ten things of the rest of the shit. <laughs> right, right, um, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. So like, you know, like well, I would watch Microsoft, Bethesda, but 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 again, da da da. I would never watch the pre-shows. Yeah. And like Prime said, well, this is kind of how pre-shows go. Can we just collectively accept? They don't need to, then, then they don't have to fucking exist. Yeah. Just get rid of them. Like it was Seriously. so bad. Like, I, I was falling asleep. Like I, I, I remember, you know, cause you know, I were in there for the long haul. Cause we're, we, we, we have back to back Ubisoft free show, Ubisoft thing gearbox. It was yeah. like, bam, like it was a long haul. Seriously. And we brought snack. I brought snacks. I had a monster as backup, like backup, backup, like, oh, okay, I've been here for an hour and a half. 20 minutes in, I was like, I need to fucking chug this thing. <laughs> I'm falling asleep, dude. It's so bad. I can't keep watching a dude. horse walking forward. I just can't. I fucking can't. Yeah, there's. it was so weird. There's like a random person walking, and then there was a drone. And I didn't even know what it was. I was it, like, what am I looking at? Yeah, it was It was a drone from Watch Dogs Legion yeah. going slower than any player ever would fucking drive it in the game. <laughs> It's like, and then even there was that car. Remember, it was like, oh, here's this nice car. Do you want our players want to watch it going 30 miles an hour? Yeah. <laughs> and, and it sucked because it had, it, I'm not saying it had potential, but when it showed the, like the opening scene was a guy from Valhalla or girl, whatever the character from Valhalla, I forget mm -hmm. walking forward. And I'm like, these are Roman S columns. Yeah. These are very Greek S stack shoes. Now my job, I haven't played Valhalla. So this is in the game. I don't know. But I'm like, oh shit, are they about to drop DLC? Because this is Viking, this is Vikings. Right. Are they about to drop the DLC of the Sack of Rome? That'll be the most fucking awesome Assassin's Creed campaign ever. Yeah. The Sack of Rome. Yeah. Because because if you think about it, too, like maybe maybe a few RTSs have done it, like Rome and stuff like that. Yeah. But I'll tell my head, I can't think of a single game that's let you play either as Viking or Roman during the fall of Rome. Uh yeah, that's and, true. Yeah. And I got and I got so hyped. I'm like, oh my god, are we gonna? Or when you see the sack of Rome and it was like, nope, he's still walking. <laughs> and then just, it just ended. I'm like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> like I knew they were using OBS. Like that's how bad yeah, it was. Like, I was like, he just had that scene at all. Like, he's click, not walking. <laughs> um, so for like, for like half a second, I'm like, am I about to buy Assassin's Creed 
and some DLC. Because <laughs> we were talking about this. The last Assassin's Creed I played was the Ezio trilogy, mm. which was the first three in the entire fucking series. Yeah. So seriously. I've been out. I've been out for quite some time. <laughs> and uh, but seriously, just the thought of like them doing the sack of Rome, I'm like, I'm, gonna, I'm I want to do that. Yeah. Yes, I want to play that. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Seriously. But no. <laughs> yeah, that, that didn't happen at all. Uh, I have a list here of some games that were announced during the actual Ubisoft event, which we went over to the Twitch, uh, yeah. the Twitch stream here. Uh, so just to kick off, uh, it seems to me that the the one thing that was the most interesting to me, because in Far Cry 6, it got leaked all over the place. Well, no, it wasn't leaked. They fucking showed it. Yeah, like, they, yeah. uh, that, that's something I want to go into because it, it's like something I want to soapbox, but it's not worth soapboxing. So I'll just sum it up one sentence. I hate when games, movies, whatever, get shown days before the reveal event. Like, mm. it's become a new trend for the past few years because, you know, we're talking about this off, you know, just, you know, hanging out. Yeah. Um, I, and, I, and I think Comic-Con started it. Um, but again, I hate how things get shown before the big event. Like, cause you know, then what's the, like, let, let's say again, you're, you're, you're going to be at Comic-Con and they're, you know, you know, prior to Comic-Con, they have to show a, a trailer for this new movie. Yeah. And you're going to wait, you're going to you're going to wait arguably like I've heard of like, you know, I think a day you're going to have to, we have to like kill a whole day waiting outside hall, the famous hall H. Yeah. And all of a sudden like 12 hours before the event, bam, the trailer drops on YouTube and it's like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> so, so the fact they showed so much of like Far Cry, um, before E3, um, now I, I was, I was happy with the end result, but mm. again, the reveal trailer of Battlefield six, again, that happened a week before E3. You couldn't wait five days. Yeah. So, um, like, so again, so I know there's a lot of stuff, but that's just my like side thing is, you know, I like getting hyped. I like getting surprises, surprised. And, you know, especially if it's, if it's for a designated event. So again, whether it's yeah. movies, games, anime, mm. what have you, um, you know, I just hate when it's shown before the big event that's supposed to show it. Right. Well, let me ask you before we continue with the Ubisoft uh, list here. Do you think that is a fall of actual Ubisoft or is that a fall of just like these gaming journalists that just leak and drop stuff before the event even happens? It's a mix. Uh, um, now I know Battlefield 6 had a big leak problem. Yeah. Um, well, they had a hacking problem. Well, yeah, that, well, that came after the fact. They came yeah. after the fact. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I don't know. Yeah. Like again, you know, in general, it sucks. Like it sucks for everybody. Yeah. And yeah. And again, and <laughs> I say upside, this may be a controversial statement. <laughs> Spoiler. I have a few of those. Here we go. Um, I, I think it's a good thing. A lot of people are getting a little more, if not mad, but critical with game journalists and what the fuck they're doing. Oh, I, I agree. Like again, from agree. like, from leaking to having stupid opinions to, not being able to play a game. <laughs> yeah. I, again, there's, there's a lot of moving parts there, but, um, it's just slowly becoming, I think a collective, it's growing, you know, it's mm -hmm. not quote unquote mainstream, but it is just growing with comments and replies that a lot of people are getting mad. Or if you, yeah. if you want to make, you know, con at least minimally critical, constructive towards game journalists, which I'm happy for. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I have to agree with that. I think it's a good point. Just a good footnote there. Um, so continuing on the main thing here that, uh, or it started off with, it was Rainbow Six Extraction, right? So September 16th, the game mm -hmm. is going to be out. And then I didn't know that this was going to be a standalone. So that was, that was all news to me. Yeah. I thought, I thought it was going to be a DLC because this spawned from one of their events uh -huh. that launched, a, um, the two operators. Yeah. Cause that was the whole thing of their, you know, there were, there's an outbreak of like these monster things and there were the doctor th operators during the event. And it was a fun event. Yeah. I played a little bit of it. Yeah. Yeah. So pretty interesting stuff. Uh, I thought that looked pretty cool. I mean, anything you're going to have Rainbow Six Siege mechanics with zombies or aliens or whatever. It was like, that's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's kind of cool. <laughs> the way I remember, I remember during our stream, I said how looking back, it's amazing how, how much of an influence Left 4 Dead truly is because mm -hmm. it's now Left 4 Dead is the bank. Left 4 Dead is now the benchmark foundation to describe any zombie game since it was made yeah so like i was telling you oh this is rainbow six siege plus left for dead <laughs> and and the thing is and the thing is as, as concise as that description is 
to a point, people that's familiar with but that's familiar with both those games even minimally can probably picture what that game's going to look and feel like. Yeah, that's true. That's a really good point. And yeah, like you said, it really set the standard for those games. And everyone really had to at least meet those expectations to some way, shape, or form. So I 100% agree with that. Uh, Mario and Rabbit Sparks of Hope switch in 2022. Uh, I know this was one where like, yes, got a square on the uh, on the old bingo because it was a uh, multiplayer games and I had to confirm that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that, that's pretty cool. That'll be out for the switch. Uh, and, you know, I'm hoping the switch. I know there was a lot of uh, there's a lot of, you know, just words going around as far as like the, the shortage for the switch and it being, yep. a, you know, a handheld console. Uh, that kind of creating a little bit of worry for a lot of people. So hopefully by the time it comes out that people will be able to, you know, not only just buy the game, but just even get a switch. Yeah. You know? And now t- correct me if I'm wrong, mm-hmm. the way it's been talked about this shortage is not linked to the PS five Xbox series X shortage. Um, cause, that, cause that's based off that one processor chip thing. I have heard that it is, but not directly. Okay. I, I've heard that the conductor, the transistor or the conductor or whatever, that it does affect the switch as well. Oh, okay. But I think they've had a shortage in general prior to that. Yeah. So I think it's just create even more of an issue. Okay. Yeah. Cause that's, cause that's the way I've heard it talked about it. Like it's just, Oh, we didn't expect so many people to buy our shit. <laughs> <laughs> Which they always have that issue, right? It's like, guys, always come on. Like, we like you guys. Like, stop. <laughs> yeah. N- Nintendo is Nintendo is the king of creating self shortages. Yeah. We told you, you know, we told you at one point, you know, we worked at the second busiest GameStop in Southern California. Yeah. And when they released the Pikachu 3DS, they gave us four. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, guys, really? And I, I, and I told you, I remember opening that day. Uh, there was, like I said, there was 10 people in line. And I was like, hey, who's who's here for the Pikachu? Okay, you, 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 you got it. Bye. First you guys. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you better drive the other stores. They're opening. They're opening now. <laughs> yeah, man. And uh, continuing on to this next game, I kind of like. I kind of want to talk about this a little bit. Avatar, like it's it's alive and well. I guess it's uh, alive and well. Avatar, enough to have a game. Frontiers of Pandora. Yeah. What the f- mm, what? This is one of the games we, we, everyone can agree with. We have no idea if it's going to be good or bad because we have only seen it. We've only seen a cinematic trailer. Yeah. But we can all agree no one asked for this. <laughs> no one said, oh, man, they're making more Avatar movies. I need my Navi games. Because <laughs> I remember we were like, if this is an open world, they need to just they need to stop. <laughs> well, I, well I know I disagree with. No, I was disagree with. Wait, mm-hmm. wait, because you, you're saying if it's not open world. Yeah. 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 Cause they're, they're, there you go. Yeah. Say, yeah. If that game is not open world, because it's like because they're showing the you know Pandora in the world and I'm, I yeah, that's what you're saying it's not open if it's not open world and it's like a fucking rail shooter or yeah. something <laughs> then uh, stop everything you're doing yeah yeah so we'll see what happens there oh and then I was saying on the stream too on the Twitch I was saying look if because I've heard James Cameron is technically still filming Avatar. Like, he's working they're, on a trilogy. They're going to exist. Yeah, they're going they, to they, exist. That's not, yeah. It's, whether they're going to exist or not, no, no. All that's the question is when they'll be done. Right. So, in, in my opinion, <laughs> this is a very a very weird opinion. But if he's able to release these and they, they even make 70% of what the first one made... He's one of the greatest directors of all time. Or he's the greatest director of all time. Because <laughs> when was the last Avatar? When, when did that release? Like seven years ago? Eight years ago? I don't know, man. All, like, I, all I know is he dropped a movie. It became the, the world's the world's biggest box office hit. And, yeah. ho- and then homie just went to keep living in a submarine. <laughs> <laughs> just, which is on a, a side note. I don't, I, I, I don't know if it's been broken, but I mm-hmm. think he still does hold. Is it still the, he, the biggest? I, he still holds. Uh, no, no, I'm going. Some, I'm going somewhere else. Oh, okay. he still holds the record for the farthest down the ocean someone's been. Mm. Like, he, like him being like he like like South Park might have make South Park made fun of it, but he does have his own like submarine, like personal personal submersible. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so that's one of the reasons um, why he, that's. I wonder why. he likes being in the water so much, huh? So, like you know, if you if you look at you know his his movies, The Abyss, yeah. um, Titanic. Yeah. I forget what came first, the ch- you know, in terms of the, the argument, the chicken or the egg. I know this is like a side tangent from games, <laughs> but it is just weird. Oh, not weird, but I don't know what came first. I don't know what came first. His love of going deep in the ocean and then making the movies or making the movies 
created his loves his love of going deep in the ocean. Mm, but but sometime after Titanic, you know, with all with his Titanic money, yeah, he bought a personal submersible, and then I don't know if it's been broken yet. But when it made the news years back, yeah. he has the record for the dip, the farthest de- depth, uh, farthest deep in the. I can't, th- I can't form a fucking sense. <laughs> <laughs> he has, he has gone farther into the ocean than, in, uh, than any other human being. Oh, okay, interesting, interesting, interesting. I uh, so there's something about something about billionaires. They just want to get farther from us. <laughs> <laughs> he, Musk wants to go. Musk wants to go to Mars. Bezos wants to go to the moon. Um, Cameron's like, fuck it, I'm going to the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of uh, companies that are going farther than we all thought when it comes to genres that uh, gamers want, uh, the next thing on the list here, Rocksmith Plus. It's back. It's back, and I don't know if anyone once again asked for this. I, I've, a, never, I've never played the Rocksmith games. I'm a guitarist, and I don't want this game. I don't <laughs> Uh, you know, I, you know, I, you know, I have my ear to the ground, but not, you know, I know the world, but no one I know ever bought it. No one I know ever talked about it. Yeah. And that's even, that's even when rock band and guitar hero blew up. Yeah. No one went, Oh man, I'm going to stop this and go buy rocksmith. Yeah. Like I, I'm guessing the, I'm guessing the latency is a lot better, uh, when it comes to the rocksmith. Cause part of me is like, okay, it's cool that you're using a real guitar, but if you're plugging it in, and you're playing like if there's latency, there's really like this game shouldn't exist at all. And and the thing yeah. the thing for me is that for Rocksmith, like for Rocksmith, I, I I would want to you play it if there's very specific things that I would want from it, like jazz things, yeah. like giant steps for someone playing on guitar. And if it was able to notate that, and I would learn it, like that's cool. But if it's just like you know, one, four, five chords and Taylor Swift chords and no respect to, no disrespect to Taylor Swift. She has sold out the stadiums at, uh, at the Staples Center. So like, she's a, she's a great writer, guitar player. Like it's just kind of something she used for a writing mechanism. But my point is, is that if it's those type of songs in Rocksmith plus, like, yeah, do we really need that? It, it's such a niche market and we're like, okay. <laughs> Like I'm worried. I'm worried about whoever's working on this because the guy who um, who was talking about it on the Twitch, he was really passionate about he it. He clearly loved what he he clearly loves what he does. Yeah. And I hopefully, so what we're alluding to, which happens all, which happens unfortunately more often than not, <laughs> is I hope Ubisoft doesn't pull an EA, and this game isn't quote unquote successful in sales. Yeah. And says so like, oh hey, your studio failed. We're gonna shut you down. Right. Exactly. That's that's that's, 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 that's where kind of we're alluding to. That's what we don't want to happen. Yeah. Because again, the, again, the guy that I was talking about was clearly passionate. He like, because because the thing was that's to remind you what separates Rocksmith from Guitar Hero and Rock Band. Rocksmith advertised this isn't a game. It mm-hmm. literally it literally teaches you how to play guitar. Yeah, and and the and the bigger thing too is that this is nowhere near going to be as big as Rock Band was, no. or Guitar Hero World Tour was, or three or two. Like it's not going to hit that same momentum. That was a very specific point in time where people were all in it. It was kind of like when people were buying dance pads, right? Yeah, you know, like that was a very specific point in time. So the fact that this is coming out, and it is coming out in a way where it's like, hey, if you have a guitar, use your guitar, plug in the cord have have fun i'm just hoping that their budget and their goal to make i just hope it isn't too expansive and i hope it's realistic the only upside uh-huh. and it's, it's, these are hard two dots to connect but facts will back me up mm. is i believe this will sell better because we're still in coven mm. than if we were not in COVID. i would agree with you if it was last year yeah it that, that we're on the tail end of it. Everything's returned to norm, but yeah. I think you know, you know, like you know, the stats where a lot of people bought pets, including that idiot over there. <laughs> I see you staring at me. Um, talking to my cat. I'm not insane. Um, <laughs> and then also a lot of you know a lot of people picked up instruments. Yeah, that's true. So that's true. Again, you know, again, this is absolutely for a niche market, but mm. I, you know. I like let's say this released two years ago. Yeah, I think it has a better chance of of succeeding now than then because because people did buy an above average amounts um, instruments the past two years. Yeah, interesting point. Interesting point. Definitely. 
Uh, so riding on to the next segment here, now I wouldn't even say a segment, I'm just going to read this off the list, but, uh, so that game that had, uh, it had a multitude of different sports, uh, snowboarding, ATVing, uh, and a bunch of other stuff, skiing, Riders Republic. So that was that game that we saw. Uh, and, and I was telling you before, I'm very thirsty for an SSX tricky of some way, shape or form. Yeah. And I know another game came out that also has snowboarding. So this is the other one that we were talking about where it's like, okay, this is, there's two snowboarding ish games. Yeah. So we'll see what happens, uh, mm. there. Uh, and then the crew too, apparently is live and well, uh, the, is it DLC that they talked about for the Ubisoft forward? Uh, it was, was like, the, it was an anniversary event. Oh, okay. Okay. So yeah, definitely anniversary event. So they talked about that. Uh, Far Cry 6 was obviously, you know, unfortunately, you know, we most stuff we knew. We knew about it already. Exactly. And then uh, one thing that was interesting was the season pass where you could become a villain or one of the villains. And then uh, it was funny. I found a kind of a list here of like what has been, uh, I guess, like the general consensus of like the most popular villains for the Far Cry series. First one is Voss, uh, who was from Far Cry 3. You have Pagan Min. Uh, you have Faith Seed, Joseph Seed, uh, you have the Jackal as well. So those are kind of like the top five. Uh, Pagan Min, that was from Far Cry 4, right? Yeah, it's, well, that's, for, that's Far Cry 4. Okay, now, I know Troy Baker played that, uh, did the voice acting for that, which I, I wish he was more in the he game. He did? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I wish he was more in the game, but... Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, interesting stuff there. I, I will say Far Cry does... Con- and seeing with seeing with Far Cry Six has Far Cry definitely has consistent really good villains. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Uh, I wish Voss was more in the game, and I love Voss. I he was crazy. Love and, Voss. And, and and apparently the the guy that w- that was the inspiration for him, like the voice actor, is also his you know the facial recognition. Um, when they're recording, like there, you know, a lot of his stuff was like Alip, like just, go, there's just run with it. He, oh, really? He, he took it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Great actor, man. So shout out to him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I would, if there was some type of uh like a uh, DLC or something where he was in it, you know, like I would, I would love to play that. Well, that's this new, well, that's this new one. You know, there's more, there more villain stuff with this, with the, with more villain stuff with the season pass. Oh, that's a good point. It's a good point. Yeah. yeah. Looking forward to that. Um, I want to talk about this. This is going to be my soapbox tangent. Uh, one of the many, but this one, I feel like it's, it's warranted, Arthur. It's yeah. warranted. And, um, this was kind of the elephant in the room that wasn't there in the room. Mm-hmm. Where the fuck is Splinter Cell? <laughs> <laughs> they, they're bleeding. They're bleeding every other Tom Clancy series dry. Dude. Where the fuck is Splinter Cell? You, like, can, you can play as him in Rainbow Six Siege. <laughs> He's a he's a DLC character. Like, give us money. <laughs> it's so weird. Like, I was talking to you a little bit about this off uh, air, but the yeah. the Netflix Geek Week, which in my opinion, just to briefly talk about it because we have a lot to talk about here, is I feel like I feel like Netflix is con well, did that very condescendingly. Like, this is Geek Week for all you fucking nerds. Here's some video yeah. game stuff I saw on some, Netflix. I saw some clips of it. I saw some clips of it, and it was super condescending and pandering. Like, okay, yeah. like, this is what you want? Well, I guess we'll fucking give it to you. I'm like, yeah. Was, yeah. It, it, I didn't it, like that marketing. No. I just, I watched some of it, it. I watched a bit of it, like, from, like, clippings on the internet. And I was like, I, I don't like how this is marketed. I'm less excited for these shows now because of Geek Week. Really? Like, the, cause, because remember, they announced a lot of gaming-based stuff. You know, we saw the trailer for the new uh, Resident Evil show. Um, they, um, uh, I think there's was, there was rumors... Of the Blood Dragon show, for Far Cry Blood Dragon show, mm-hmm. um, and there was a few other things. There was a few other things, but again, it, it was like they it was like they don't want to do it. They hate that they hate the fact they have to, but like here you go, Meh. you know yeah. what I mean? And it's like that was, fuck you guys. Yeah, that yeah, I I yeah, I kind of felt like I I felt offended. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like watching that, I was like, you guys. Kind of don't get it, huh? Like, and they want to jump into the gaming industry. They like, want to hard like we mentioned. Oh, we mentioned we mentioned news wise a few um, episodes back. Um, companies were fighting for licenses. Yeah. Remember, Netflix was fighting for licenses. HBO, which now owned slash partnered by AT and T, which I think is weird. Um, <laughs> Apple TV and Amazon, Amazon yeah. Prime were like the big four just grabbing to buy partnerships with licenses. Yeah. Um, like I think 
um, cause Bethesda is involved now because, because there's gonna be the, the fallout show. Mm-hmm. There's gonna be a, there's a fall, there's gonna be a, a fallout show is coming. Okay. Um, wow. you know, there's wow. the, there's the, you know, we, we talked about the uncharted series. We talked about the, uh, sorry, last of a series uncharted movie. Mm. Um, there's a bunch. Yeah. There, there, there is a bunch Bioshock. Um, Bio, uh, Bioshock is um, in in talks. Okay. Uh, I, again, I forget who, but those are the big Cuphead. Four. It's gonna be Cuphead. Cuphead, thing. yeah. Cuphead right. with Netflix. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Again, there's there's a bunch, but um, and that's just again, that's just with Netflix. That's not even to mention again how um, the other ones, HBO, uh, Apple TV, and Prime, Amazon Prime, were all fighting for licenses too. Yeah, I will say, uh, aside from the condescendingness, if there's a if there's you know a network that can not do that. I, I do feel like the streaming services are fantastic for those platforms. Yeah. Uh, like, for example, like the, the Metal Gear Solid movie that's going to be coming out. I, I really wish it was a series instead. Like Mortal Kombat, as much as I liked it, I wish it was a miniseries instead. Well, we are getting sequels. Okay. Yeah, that's true. We are getting sequels. Um, mm-hmm. I just wish they're in, in a miniseries format versus movies. I just feel like movies are really bad for video games, uh, as we know from history. Yeah. <laughs> and because, you know, because again, that's because that's, you know, no, we mentioned it. I won't go too much into it, but it, just mm. on paper, yeah, putting anywhere from a twenty to sixty hour story into an hour and a half, it's challenging. <laughs> yeah, even yeah. even for the best of them. Yeah, even seriously. For the, it's just it's, again, it's like hey, put a six, put a sixty, and hey, you know, put sixty hours worth of dialogue, or sixty hours worth of script, a uh, script. No, that's repetitive. Again, sixty hours worth of scenes. Yeah, into an hour and a half thing. And especially, and again, we met, we mentioned with Borderlands, you know, if it's a franchise, you know, how much of the franchise are there, you know, like, like even the, mo- like the Monster Hunter movie, you know, again, how much of the franchise are they going to put in this one movie? Yeah. So, yeah, no, it's very true. Very true. And then, uh, yeah. So Splinter Cell, man, just going back to it, uh, like Ubisoft, I don't know what you guys are doing. I don't know if you have issues with the source codes. I don't know if you have issues with finding whoever's who's going to be the next Sam Fisher, but God damn it. Get the, get it fucking together. Like that is ridiculous that that wasn't shown or there's no plans for it at all. Like they please fix that. Like for God's sakes, there's the, uh, you know, the series on Netflix, uh, for the Splinter Cell animated series. And yep. then the cool thing is that Derek Kolstad, creator John Wick franchise, is going to be on board to write the series, Good. which is cool. Because he's a, he's a stuntman. He's a stuntman turned director, yeah. which, as we see when John Wick, is a great fucking transition. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. One thing I will say with, with Splinter Cell, it's weird. Like I said, with the, like any, anything with Tom Clancy's name on it, they're just bleeding it dry. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. like... like to a point, they're almost over. To a point, I feel like they're almost overwhelming their own market because there's like Wildlands, there's break, there, there's, there's Wildlands, Breakpoint, mm. Division, Siege, uh, there's another one. Yeah, I know there's another one. I forget what. Um, but again, they're just they're just and 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 the thing is, the thing of those those are all like group. What they all have in common is group based tactical shooters. Mm. Splinter Cell is David is Fisher. Yeah. And I will say um the last voice actor him was fucking awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry I had a cough come up. Um if you've seen uh Starship Troopers, um the Roughnecks, the 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 teacher that has the mechanical alarm, where you go? You know That's what you right. have to do. That is him. That's him. That is him. That's right. Yeah, he's yeah. A, yeah, he's also in um He's in Total Recall as well. That yeah. Guy. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, he's one of the yeah, he's one of the main villains in the Total Recall. Yeah, uh, Schwarzenegger movie. But yeah, he's a yeah, he's a great fucking voice for it. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, yeah, we'll see what happens, man. But move, moving on, uh, switching gears, if you will. Yeah, I still got it. Um, the Gearbox event. So that was the oh. next thing that we streamed, and we were kind of on like a very low because that Ubisoft event forward it just went backwards. Um. <laughs> we had a low, we had a low bar coming in, into Gearbox event, and they 
didn't meet it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they most definitely didn't. So the, the positive on this is that on the bingo, I said Borderlands type game, and I kind of like I kind of barely got this square because yeah. Prime, uh, shout out to Prime, uh, he was uh, on the chat and the Twitch. You know, he was like, technically, this isn't really a Borderlands game, but um, but but tight, the game wouldn't happen if Borderlands didn't it happen. Has Tiny Tina's name in it? Yeah, yeah. So. Um, there's going to be Tiny Tina's Wonderland, similar to Alice Wonderland's, but Tiny Tina's which, Wonderland's. Which I know, I didn't, I thought it was going to be a, a DLC. Yeah, I thought it was going to be a DLC as well. It's a standalone game. It's a standalone full game, which should be interesting. Coming out next year, 2022. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's funny because I'm a fan of Tiny Tina, that character, and I, I don't know how I would like it. I don't know how I would like it as a full standalone you know what I mean? Like I like Tiny so, Tina because how she how she interacted with yeah. other characters. I don't know about. I, I'll say this: it. So they they said they got a lot of inspiration and the framing from her DLC of Borderlands Two, uh-huh. Dunge, uh, Tiny Tina's uh, whatever they call the Dungeons and Dice Monsters attack on Dungeon Keep. Okay. Um, which one was pretty much her hosting a D and D game with the Borderlands crew, but you were in it. That was amazing. That that was mm. I, that is by to me by far the best DLC. Of <clears throat> apologies, apologies again for the cough. Um, I think that was the best DLC of the Borderlands series. Okay. And so if it's like, so if it's, they said similar to that, she's like hosting. She's, it's like, it's like, it's her world. Like she's like kind of the, the narrator, narrator, so to speak. Then like, then like, you know, like a just NPC quest giver. Yeah. Hey, come here. Listen, <laughs> you know, so, so with that framework, I think, I think the, character won't be oversaturated okay okay that's fair and, point and, and you know since you know keeping a voice actors um the voice uh, by ashley birch from her brother anthony birch who wrote borderlands 2 um he wrote the character for her yeah like he like he wrote the character for his sister um and he, for those of you i mentioned this before but again for those of you like tiny tina and you want kind of more of that they had, um, you know, they've both gone on to like bigger things. Ashley Birch, she's in a lot of shows and she's a lot, she's, you know, she's a, um, not full time, but a voice actress and many other things. But they, they used to have a YouTube show to kind of got them the job, so to speak, mm. of called Hey Ash, What You Playing? Yeah. And uh, when you see that, you can definitely see the framing of how, like, yeah, Anthony, why Anthony did, why her, why Anthony Birch did such a great job writing Borderlands 2 and why Ashley Birch was such, you know, that's tiny tiny tino nice nice cool very cool very cool uh and then speaking of borderlands continuing on here uh as randy pitcher was running around uh in that god-awful attire (laughs) i described it perfectly he picture you're playing an rpg Mm. and you enter the city in the slums yeah and then you go to the elite area where all the where all the elites are in the high area of this RPG city and the clothes they're wearing, that was his shirt. <laughs> he was wearing like a gold, he was wearing a white fraily yeah. um, dress shirt with gold satin sle- <laughs> undersleeves and like gold, f- almost like the shirt from the pirate shirt from Jerry Seinfeld, <laughs> but not as extreme, but all the ends and borders and seams were gold yeah that was a that was a weird that was a weird shirt it, it, it definitely like it, it kind of like catered to our point as far as like they're not ready for this it was, <laughs> and so speaking not ready for this first of all the gearbox show was supposed to be 45 minutes it was only half an hour <laughs> so let's just start there and here's the thing not 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 consecutively but half of the time half of that gearbox show was randy pitchford on the set of borderlands the movie just interviewing random people. Oh my God. Yeah. That was half true. the show. That was half the show. And then, you know, he, he managed to pull Kevin Hart. Uh, and, and funny because I, it's, I wish this was on the square because you would have got that square 100% because you did call I, this. I call it last episode that yeah. they're absolutely going to have Kevin Hart yeah. in the show. You definitely called but, it. But when I pictured it, I pictured it planned. <laughs> I pictured it to a point funny. <laughs> this was just straight up like, Hey Kevin, do you have a minute? Here's the camera. Talk to it. Yeah, yeah. That's what it was. Like you saw that he was like in, improving everything. Like, yeah, this was not a. Script. There's like there's a difference between improving to improv and like improving because no one knows what the hell's going on. 
this was no one knows what's going on and uh they just had to they just kevin hart just had to talk talk to the camera yeah yeah definitely definitely so yeah we'll see what happens uh as far as for gearbox but yeah definitely uh de- definitely uh disappointing uh that event you know unfortunately and then godfall uh that game that was on the ps5 it's going to be out for the ps4 and I believe they're making some content for it as well. So, yay, I guess. Um, you know, maybe if they make another one, hopefully they can kind of work those kinks out. And, you know, as we were very low, down and out, we are like, I, 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 we, we, sh- we streamed for all of this terrible I thing. lost sleep. <laughs> I lost precious sleep. Like yeah, we yeah you lost sleep. It's just, yeah, it was just, and, and and I even made a post on the Games for Life Instagram. I was like, I uh, can can Microsoft save this fucking E three because what is happening? If so. yeah, two, we were two for two, um, you know, three for three if you include the pre show mm-hmm. that had no right to fucking exist. <laughs> um, they. You know, three, you know, three for three, it was just waste of time. Yeah. So we we're, you know, we we're, you know, I was texting you Star Wars fucking memes of like, help us, Phil Spencer. <laughs> <laughs> Your only hope. Because <laughs> we're just so bummed out of like, this is a, it was a disappointing E3. And I was almost saying like, fuck, did Sony have it right by just not fucking showing up? Because yeah. no one else bothered to do the work. Seriously. Like... Again, for Ubisoft, my most annoyingly memorable memorable takeaway is that that girl in the green shirt applied to Ubisoft, <laughs> and then now she's in charge of people, and she has she lives by the San Francisco Bridge. <laughs> 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 Again, and you know they spend more they spend more time on that than like fucking Far Cry Six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But quite literally, quite literally, they did. So, yeah. But thank God. We checked out the uh, the Microsoft Bethesda conference, and I got to give him one of these, man. I got to give him one of these. I did a stream for a solo dolo because Arthur was at work. Yeah. And man, did they not disappoint? Very interesting stuff here. So we will. I, I gotta we'll say talk that, about this. I gotta say this. They were the only one that had an actual conference. Yeah. Again, yeah, yeah. Gearbox was Gearbox was 15 minutes of running pitch for, hey, person that works on the set, <laughs> talk to the talking camera. Um, and then it was, and then it was again, Tiny Tina's thing, which, by the way, again, mentioning how, how they're spoiling stuff, or like things were being shown before E3. The day before the Gearbox conference, they show the, they show the Tiny Tina um, oh, yeah. Wonderland trailer. Dr- what yeah. the fuck was the point? Dude, yeah, that was that was ridiculous. The day before their conference, the day before the conference, uh, Gearbox releases a trailer, which was arguably a fifth of their entire fucking conference. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Makes no sense. But, so, but, but, so, sir, yeah. but, but, but going back here to Microsoft Bethesda, I will say... Um, this is why I like Microsoft, right? This is why I like Microsoft and they, they went in, they were like, you know what? We're going to approach this like it's E3, like this COVID stuff didn't happen. Like they actually cared. Like they actually cared. Their setup was beautiful. That stand and everything. Everyone killed it with their, with, you know, talking about the games. It wasn't overkill, right? Cause a lot of these presenters they like to do this overkill bullshit, you know? And then obviously uh, to start off the con the, the, the conference here or to start off the showcase, uh, Phil Spencer, unfortunately, no, uh, or, or uh, sorry, uh, Todd Howard, unfortunately, no Phil Spencer on the same stage. I, that was, <laughs> that was one of my one of my bingo squares slash predictions was Todd Howard on the same Todd Howard on the stage with Phil Spencer. That was a good prediction too. <sighs> that was a really good prediction. You so spent seven point like, oh. five billion dollars. You can't stand next to each other. <laughs> Fuck, dude. Uh, that was, uh, yeah. I, I still again like. You know, if I were to bet on my predictions, that's what I would have bet money on. Yeah. I can't believe it didn't happen. That was a good- $7.5 billion partnership, <laughs> and you're not going to share the same fucking stage. <laughs> yeah, man. But you know what was interesting? And I actually got a square for this one, is uh, they showed a Starfield teaser, first official teaser. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In, in quite some time now, 25 years in the making or some, some, something like that, that Todd Howard said. Like over twenty years in the making for this game. Uh, I did not hear him say that. 
Uh, it was in like the title cards or whatever. Uh, some something like that. But I'm nervous. Crazy. Yeah, I'm very nervous. Uh, at least it's going to be an exclusive Series X PC. And they gave us a date. I did not see that coming. I did not see it coming. They're going to give a date. Yeah. November well, November something, uh, 20, 2022. Okay. I yeah. Think, I think November 9th, but the date is confirmed. And part of me is like, you guys need to cancel all this Fallout 76. <laughs> cancel all that shit this and work game, on Starfield. <laughs> they, it is bullshit what they did to Fallout 76. This game came out three years ago and we're just now making their the game is just now fucking playable yeah now it's weird now here's the thing here's the, here's the thing i toted what happened with i i i you know i gave my thumbs up and i praised what happened with no man's sky mm -hmm. but yet i'm shitting on but yet i'm shitting on 76 mm -hmm. it's not apples to apples mm -hmm. here's what happened first of all no man's sky is not you know a giant of a studio bethesda yeah um and all and and they didn't make it like MMO, MMO style. Mm. Um, fucking uh, follow did. Mm. And here's the thing too: like, there's a difference between there's a there's a difference between re releasing a game that's not done and straight up lying about so much. Now people can say, oh, they said there is there is Coop promise, but pr Coop wasn't there for No Man's Sky, um, which is a point given. But there is a lot of stuff different. And here's why. Here's why. Fall of Science 6 was straight up lazy. No, Man, no Man's Sky was buggy, not done. 76 was lazy. Mm. Here's what I mean. First of all, we were told to me like, you know, it's going to be like 16, 16 times the detail, more powerful graphics we've never seen before. And yet, there, yet the, the engine they used was so old and so fucking lazy. Mm. The bugs that were in Fallout 4 from the same engine... We're in 76. They never patched those bugs out. It's It was the same fucking bugs. Oh, wow. They literally just copy and pasted it um, and then try to make it multiplayer. Damn. So that's, that's the thing. So there's one thing of like a failure and improve it to lying and laziness. Yeah. That I attribute with 76. Makes sense. Fair point. Fair point. Um, so continuing on here, uh, it looks like the one of the bit. This is actually the last fight because this is actually the last game that was shown before the end of the conference. But Redfall, the vampire uh, game, I guess Arcane Studios is working on that. Yeah, Arcane, which made Prey and uh, Dishonored. Yeah, they made Dishonored and Prey. Um, great studio, great games. This looks fun. Yeah, this looks. This, it's a cooperative based shooter with powers and vampires are involved. Um, you know, I, and, 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 and um, I know Bethesda is like a big, you know, you know, publisher house, but again, at least with like an arcane, I can say, yeah, I've, I've enjoyed their games. They're playable, you know, dishonored prey or, you know, you didn't, you didn't hear like, Oh, the game's unplayable because the bugs. No, no, like, right. no, it was just, these were finished, polished games and they were fun. Dishonored one, dishonored two. And then the prey, re, the, the revamp for prey that Bethesda did. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah, I liked how it looked. I liked how it looked. I thought the gameplay was cool, or not the gameplay, the just like the the trailer, or whatever. That was cool. And then it's supposed to be uh, single player or co op, like four player co op or whatever it is. So, yeah, excited right. for that summer twenty twenty two. And then Stalker two, the Heart of Chernobyl uh, looked really good. Okay, that explains a lot. Cause okay, cause uh, first of all, I was watching this at work, mm. so I was like capturing it. I was watching when I could. Yeah, when there were when there weren't customers. And so there was a customer, blah, 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 I get back to the show. I thought they were showing a new Exodus because it was like very. Oh, like Metro, right? Yeah, it was very yeah. Metro survival, Eastern Europe. Yeah. Post-apocalypse shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it definitely. Because yeah, I, I didn't know if it was going to be Metro or Stalker. And then when they, they dropped Stalker, I was like, oh, shit. So. I, yeah, I thought, it was, I, th I thought it was going to be Metro up until, mm -hmm. up until the title because it looked like it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm curious to see more about it because, you mm. know, like you said, there is the similarity there. So I think if they can have some gameplay that really differentiates that experience, uh, me personally, if it was an open world type of experience, I think I, I think I heard from a ra I think there was a random article source that said that Stalker 2 is a very large game. Okay. Uh, so that'll be really exciting to see. And it's supposed to be uh, April 22nd of next year. Uh, some more things on that. And uh, moving over here to the next one, 
Uh, Back for Blood, man. Back for Blood. And then, of course, this was announced before the actual uh, Warner Brothers event, which, you know, they're, they, they're the... Uh, what the what is it? The publishers for Back for Blood, but um, uh, yeah, sure. October twelfth this year, roll around and fucking Game Pass. That is what freaked yeah. me out. I was like, whoa, Game Pass. The one thing I'm kind of disappointed about this uh-huh. is a week after, and we'll get into it. Uh, ten days after Back for Blood comes out, Battlefield Six comes out. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah. And we'll get and we'll get into it because uh, gameplay was shown from Battlefield Six. And yeah. Spoiler, I want it. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, this is if there's any awards to give out for E3. Oh, that's the next thing. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> any awards to give out for E3? This is obviously to me. This is like the game of show. Like Battlefield. Yeah. 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 Just just from even from that first trailer that dropped, I was like. There's a lot of shit going on, but I like the feel. I like that's, the that's music. That's Battlefield. Yeah. That's like, oh, chaos, like controllable, fun chaos. That's <laughs> Battlefield. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh. Yeah, that was nuts. And then even this tra- this uh, this gameplay that they showed, that's alpha gameplay. Yeah. But still gameplay nonetheless. There were no lizard people like like you like you were, you know, that, yeah. that we all we all hate. And when we say lizard people, we mean like uh, uh, fake game, like fake gamers. Like right? the fake gamers that's like go over there. I think there's someone there. Yeah. Oh, no one's here, but wow, this wall looks really rendered. <laughs> Powered by dice. Great job, team. Great job. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, someone has been downed. We should pick them up right now. Versus <laughs> like, versus like, why are you staring at the fucking wall? Go pick him up, you stupid shit. Uh, you know, like. <laughs> yeah, how people talk. <laughs> yeah, like how, yeah, how humans talk, how humans talk during the games. Because like, if we're playing games and one of you said, like, hey, man, we're dying. What the fuck are you doing over there? This wall looks really rendered. <laughs> I'm going to fucking kill you myself. <laughs> yeah, so Arthur's been banned for friendly fire. <laughs> oh, fucking worth it. Yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, the gameplay looks so good. So I just, it looks great so far, man. And I know we were very harsh, you know, the last episode. At least as we were very skeptical, I should say. Constructively skeptical because, yeah. one, it's, first and foremost, this is still EA. Yeah. And EA has a long track record of bullshit and only a very, very recent track record of not horrible bullshit. <laughs> Cause remember, even though Battlefield looks great, here do you want to know something we did we did, do you want to know something they avoided a topic like the plague? They never talked about Battlefield Mobile. Yeah, exactly. Because again, exactly. it's still fucking EA. And I'm there's a there's a growing trend. To not pre-order, to not pre-order this, to show how how reasonably constructive, sorry, skeptical we are. Yeah. Not only because one, it's EA, because you know what happened to Battlefield Five. They just made it unfun. Yeah. Battlefield One was so freeing, and they're like, hey, let's do the opposite <laughs> and make Battlefield Five really fucking constri- constrictive. Yeah. Now, one thing I will say, I'm kind of disappointed there's no campaign, because Battlefield campaigns are fun. Yeah. Um, especially Battlefield 1. I can't speak to Battlefield 5 because I, I played it for two days. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Battlefield 1, it was a cool fucking concept. Now I, now, I will say that Battlefield 1 is like a real, you know, Battlefield 1 was based off a real thing, you know, a, you know, World War 1. Right, and the, right. the campaign was based off of real platoons or real people. So, given it is Battlefield 2042, <laughs> 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 this is based on a true story. <laughs> so, it turns out there was this tram traveler. And uh, he just told us a bunch of shit. We made a game about it. <laughs> um, so again, a little disappointed. There's no campaign, but it's not deal breaker for me. But again, I like it myself and like a lot of you know a lot of people are coming of skept- you know being con- reason- reasonably skept- skeptical. That's what I'm trying to fucking say. Um, I'm not going to pre-order it. Yeah. Yeah, and and I will say it was smart for them to not include the mobile feature that we know that is a part of the game some way, shape, or form, or just a separate entity. I think it was smart for them not to talk about that yet. Because it would, yeah, if they if they would have shown the reveal trailer, then the gameplay trailer, and then come on stage about and talked about quote unquote on stage about um, Battlefield Mobile. Oh, dude, they would have been shit on so hard. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Um, so continuing on here, uh, for some of the games that were announced, Contraband, uh, which is an open world Xbox exclusive title. We're not sure about the date, but they did drop that little teaser, which is, it mm-hmm. seems interesting. We'll have to see. Not too much to comment on there. Um, 
And then uh, something that I found really interesting. Oh, I lost my shit at work. <laughs> You're be- I mean, obviously, it's so funny because every time you think of pirates in these days, you think about Pirates of the Caribbean. And lo and behold, Sea of Thieves, Jack Sparrow coming to Sea of Thieves. I'm fucking hyped about this. <laughs> um, one, I'm a big Johnny Depp fan. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, you know, one who, who doesn't love, it, you know, at least the first Pirates of Caribbean movie, Caribbean, Caribbean movie. Yeah. That's one of my handful of movies I can honestly watch like a dozen times and not get tired of it. Nice. The music and everything and his character, you know, his character. And it's not only his character. There's a few other characters in the trailer. We saw they're coming over. I forget oh, her Davy name. Jones, Dave, Davy Jones. Davy mm. Jones. His number two, I forget his name is number two, like the big guy that usually oh, yeah. drinks. Um, the source, the sorceress, enchanted, enchant, enchantress lady. I forget her name. I forget too. Um, David, or you know, she's David Jones's love. You know, because that's the whole thing. He locked up his heart because she left him, but yeah, she she didn't leave him. She got trapped and watch the movies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, as I'm like just describing the plot of the fucking series. <laughs> um, but no, I was fucking again in terms of crossover. When games have crossover events, sometimes I hit or miss. This is a definite fucking hit, dude. Yeah. All my friends that we play that I play see at these with, we're all messing each other. Like, are you fucking seeing this? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yeah. So this see, so see at these is about to get a lot of uh, big player count nice. increase. Um, so again, another thing that shocked me: not only did we get a, a date versus you know coming soon, it's fucking like in two weeks. Yeah, <laughs> it's June in twenty second. No, it's less than. It is. It is uh, a over a week. It's uh, nine days away. Yeah. We are less than 10 days away from that event. And then if you're watching this Monday, even less, seven days away. <laughs> yeah. Like, man, I am. Uh, it's wild. That, yeah. Again. So again, not only do we get a date, but the fact it's like in 10 days you know, from today, from, from the announcement. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck? That was awesome. Yeah. Cause that was one thing I was, cause that was one thing I kind of predicted with the whole, like this code, like COVID year, not like, Oh, it's digital, but no, cause that's COVID. Mm. Everything is going to be delayed. I predicted that a lot of the stuff we were going to see were not going to come out anytime soon. And this is like, surprise, 10 days later. <laughs> Which is a pleasant fucking surprise. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So shout out to, to you guys, you know, uh, excited to play that. Uh, I'll, I'll have to play with you guys sometime uh, as far as to see a thieves. So. It's on Game Pass. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, indeed. Uh, and then continuing on, speaking of things that are also on Game Pass, the Yakuza Like a Dragon available for Game Pass now. So we got that uh, that square there. Um, so that looks pretty good. We talked about that one before. Uh, one game it was nice to see was uh, 12 Minutes. What? I think I completely missed that. What was that? 12 Minutes, it's, uh, it's made by an indie developer, if I'm not mistaken, but it's a top-down view. And every 12 minutes, the scenario changes where it's like you and like your wife or something. So one of the scenarios was a cop's break in. They say you're, you are, you are, you know, you are under arrest for a murder that happened seven years ago. And the wife's like freaking out. And then the guy wakes up and another 12 minutes and something happens in a different scenario. Yeah. Really interesting stuff. Uh, I remember when I first saw that it was many years ago, I think during an E3 or something, I was like, this looks crazy uh but it's gonna be coming out this year august 19th i want to say it's game pass i'm not a hundred percent sure uh but i'm excited to check that out definitely i feel like i'm gonna be playing more indie games uh especially since sony isn't gonna you know do that uh, <laughs> as much yeah <laughs> but um i wanted to, i wanted to have you talk about this because you're a big fan of tim schaefer and all of his psycho knotsness uh psycho knots 2 Having a release date for this year, August 25th. So I'm excited about that. Very. And there's <laughs> a growing trend. Um, we got a lot of fucking dates from this conference. We did. Like dates. Like not like, I mean, there was a few like holidays, whatever. But even then it was like holiday. It was like, we know when this game's coming out. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, this is definitely the, the, uh, this is definitely the show where, People were like, "All right, let's start. Let's start filling the calendar." You know what I mean? Like again, yeah. a, again, this was a show Microsoft came to impress, and they fucking killed it. Um, but ask your question of Psychonauts two. I cannot wait. If you haven't played Psychonauts one, play it. Um, it's now on Game Pass. Yeah. Um, I bought it years ago. Do not regret my fucking purchase. <laughs> it's um that classic era. Like kind of like Spyro and stuff where it's like a platformer, mm. but the story and the mechanics 
And it's weird because it's one of those games where the game mechanics matches what's happening perfectly. Yeah. So the reason it's called Psychonaut is you're like a telepathic spy. Mm. And like you go into people's brains to solve stuff. And it's funny because like, like, let's say like, you know, because you know the phrase like people have baggage. Yeah. So you go into people's brains and you have to find like suitcases. You have to find their baggage. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, and then you get, you get like their mindscape, like what their mind is like. So, I mean, it's not hundred percent confirmed, but this is Psychonauts. So like a lot of the gameplay we showed that was showed of like these crazy Tim Burton esque monsters. That's kind of what the inner, the, their inner brain is. Okay. So a famous level is like the milkman. Cause like on the outside, he just was like a milkman. I am mm. the milkman. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> you were talking to the milkman, but on the inside of his head, he's like a conspiracy theorist that the government's tried to get him. So inside of his head, inside of his head, you have to con you have to constantly dodge and avoid like FBI agents, like black cloak shit. Mm. It's just so good. It, that's I, interesting. I, I didn't know how deep Psycho Nuts was. So that's interesting. You know, yeah, it, it's again, it's it, it's it's like in terms of simplicity, it's like smart, like two point. Actually, I would say Crash Bandicoot's like simple. Like there's. Not really a story. Yeah. Someone get kidnapped. You have to jump on jump 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 on boxes on your, along the way to, to rescue them, um, and that's that's a platformer. And Psychonauts is on the other end of that scale, where again it's a platformer, but again the mechanics match the story in the world so good. Mm -hmm. Again, mm -hmm. so like that, so we saw how like you're, you know, you're a telepathic acronaut or like you're a mental acrobat. You know what I mean? And like that's. You know, you're doing acrobats in people's heads. Yeah. It's like literally. Nice. So, so it, it's just really cool. And again, this is from double, this is from double fine. Um, yeah. They make, they make a ton of fun games like Grim Fandango stacking um, the cave. Yeah. Oh, costume quest. They make costume quest. Oh, yeah. okay. That was nice. fun. That again, was, yeah. again, they just have consistent fun. Oh, recently they made, and recently they made gang beasts. Mm. Um, you know, that the one like kind of beat them up. But again, they're just consistent for just good, fun games. And, but but I would say in terms of storytelling, this is like their this is like their this is their baby. Nice, very nice, very nice. And speaking of babies or Obsidian's baby, I'm gonna skip over Fallout 76 because we talked about it already. Fuck it. Uh, <laughs> well, just briefly, Steel Rain, July 7th, The Pits, 2022. Don't play it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so Outer Worlds 2 uh, nah. That was exciting That was an exciting I was like oh sick Because we kind of knew They were going to make its franchise Because you know There's that news article I didn't know It was going to happen so fast True like, That's true That, that was That's straight true. up Like literally Two maybe three weeks ago <laughs> yeah. Like two maybe three weeks ago um, Microsoft announced they, they, they bought it from Take Two You know Take Two owns Rockstar Slash GTA And I was like Yes Get out of their fucking hands <laughs> Put it in Microsoft And then Boom, Outer Worlds 2. Like, yeah. they, hit the, they hit the ground fucking running. That's that's very true, man. Yeah, they I guess they saw the numbers. They're like, let's run with this. So, very excited for that. Very excited for Obsidian. And then I got to give him one of these. Got to give him one of these, baby. Dude, Obsidian's on a fucking roll, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and then I wanted to talk about a question, a brilliant question that you brought up. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was a very brilliant question, <laughs> a very smart question, a very uh, practical question, because this is an interesting circle of events, right? And it's funny, too. Uh, I was watching the David Jaffe video uh, where he interviewed Colin Moriarty, and even Colin Moriarty, who is a, uh, I mean, he's, a, he's, a, he's, he's, he's like becoming a legend in the industry. He's just very well known throughout the industry. Journalist who was on, uh, was on IGN, now has his... Uh, uh, PlayStation Plus Sigurd symbols uh, in a Last Stand kind of like series or whatever and, uh, platform. Oh, and he also uh, sounds like a Sherlock Holmes villain. <laughs> yeah, his diction is is quite good. Um, <laughs> you say his name, I'm like Moriarty. <laughs> okay, <laughs> his diction is quite good. Uh, smart guy, but um, he he even said that. Beth that Microsoft overpaid for Bethesda. Um, when they have Obsidian, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So going to your question here that you asked me, will Outer Worlds 
to uh, be better than Starfield? And I think that's a fair question because we've had this scenario, right, where Todd Howard is bigged up. I feel like, and it's funny, I was thinking how Randy Pitcher is the new Todd Howard, where he bigs up something and we're like, okay, what's happening? He hasn't, uh, Randy Pitcher hasn't, hasn't fucked up that much yet. <laughs> that's fair. Um, but, you know, Todd Howard, we've had these scenarios, right, where he bigs up something, we're very excited, you know, XOXO, and Gossip Girl, and then, <laughs> and then we drop they drop 76 and the game isn't playable and it's just disheartening. And then you have Obsidian where they've had a pretty solid track record on the RPGs that they've released. I think they've had a solid track record, period. Um, especially with Outer Worlds, obviously. So we have Outer Worlds 2 coming out. And, you know, we've we've known we've known Obsidian to really knock it out of the park. Yeah, uh, mainly their games are fucking playable at launch. <laughs> Uh, I've said so, it, I've so what is once. so what is your what what is your thoughts on on your question? I Do you think, think it will. I think our worlds two will be better than Starfield. Because mm. um, you mentioned earlier something that I did not hear that makes me very nervous. That was that's been in making for twenty five years. Yeah, that makes me very nervous because that means if they may make it twenty five years. What fucking engine were they using? Yeah, and what are they? What are they? Un, what are they? Like like fixing, like undoing and redoing? Yeah. If I did, if I had put a timestamp, they've been using the same engine for roughly twenty five fucking years, <laughs> and it shows. Yeah. Um. Like they can't do that with Starfield. I, they can't. I I really want an email to leak that Obsidian for the past five years. I, or at least X years mm -hmm. has been low key competing with Bethesda mm -hmm. and is now recently openly winning because um, if not, if not years, at least with the whole Fallout 76 thing. Cause again, Fallout 76 came out uh, holidays and then March, a few months after outer worlds fucking knocked out of the park. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then I mentioned another, a similar question that we talked about in a previous episode. Will Avowed be better than Elder Scrolls 6? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I thought it was interesting that Phil Spencer actually said Elder Scrolls 6. Yeah. He said that on the showcase where I didn't, I didn't expect him to say that. So yeah. he was, was kind of like in a much note where it's like, don't mess up our $7.5 billion yeah. investment, Todd. <laughs> could, it, could it have gone on stage together and given me a bingo point? Um, but I think... I, again, it's again knowing Bethesda, knowing that they that they refuse to make a game with newer graphics, newer mechanics. You know, their 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 kind of previous mentality of it, if an ain't broke, don't fix it, is clearly failing because it is broke and they're not fucking fixing it. <laughs> um, you know. I mentioned how we, you know we're we're over gamers are collectively over the the acceptance of playing a game that does not work at launch with Beth and Bethesda the Bethesda has been the king of that for decades yeah and that time is over because uh, through the help of them and Cyberpunk again that time is dead yeah that time is done so so good point um i i again i think i think outer worlds will be better than starfield because that 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 being made for 25 years makes me very nervous because again that is no longer a that is no longer means good yeah it didn't work for that one last guardian last thank you yeah last guardian the proverbial sequel to shadow of the colossus yeah didn't work for them didn't work for cyberpunk it's that track record that there's no, there's no longer a successful track record for advertising. It's been the making for so many fucking years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. Elder Scrolls six. I can't speak to you only cause we've heard nothing of it other than it's going to exist. Yeah. Um, and the two point avowed, same thing for Avowed. now avowed. We've seen now avowed. We've seen the reveal CGI trailer and Elder Scrolls Six got announced, but then not for that. For those two, nothing else isn't really shown. Exactly. We should. Uh, my guess is that we should see a Vowed. Uh, we should see a gameplay trailer or just more of a teaser for a Vowed next year. So, knowing that Bethesda is now under the microscope of Microsoft and Phil Spencer, you know, making a good game, Todd Howard. Um, <laughs> I think Outer Worlds will definitely run smoother. 
than Starfield mm. and better? I may think so. I'm, yeah. going, I'm going with the yeah. I'm going, with, I, I'm going with I think Outer Worlds 2 will be a more critically, both critical and gamer reviewed game, um, will have better scores than Starfield. It's a fair, uh, it's a fair, um, you know, uh, decision. I, I'm gonna just for the sake of argument and fun. Uh, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say Starfield is they're gonna be their redeemer, and I hope it's on the same level of. I'm hoping they're gonna make a game that's gonna be on the same level or similar to um, a Mass Effect type thing. Oh, Mass Effect? No, that's yeah. A- yeah, I know. It doesn't make any sense, but I, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but for the sake for the sake of the fun. That is going to be my my prediction I like, there. I was like, "That's a reacher." Yeah, it's a it's a reach arounder. Um, so, <laughs> so to continuing on with, uh, say, we talked about Elder Scrolls and Avowed. Mm. Uh, the enhanced edition for the Elder Scrolls Online is going to be dropping here. Yep. Uh, actually, today, if you're watching this or listening to this, since it dropped Monday, uh, and then. Uh, According to Game Games Radar, it says here the upgrades uh, include the will enhance the game's visuals, the performance, adding performance fidelity modes, increased draw distance, faster loading times, and more. So uh, quality of life improvements, as we call it. <laughs> yes, yes, which Microsoft uh, kills every time. Uh, so sp- much. Specifically this year, last year, the uh, quality of life, game preservation, uh, go Microsoft. Yeah. So. Uh- I won't go too much into ESO, Elder Scrolls Online, um, but I mentioned it before. Yeah. Its community is still strong. It's a fun game. Um, it, is a, it is an MMO in a sense. Now, here's the thing. It's a, it's a console MMO, which means there's different like pay tiers. So first of all, the vanilla game is free via Game Pass. Um, now, like an MMO, there are expansions that are sold separately. And also, like an MMO, there are there is a monthly subscription. Mm. But... Just let you know, if, you have, if you've never played an MMO-style game on console, the subscription works differently. So you, you don't need... Hey, again, Cap. Lola with her name. She's very... She's a curious cat. Sorry, cat. Go put you down. I know. Sorry, that's my cat. She wants attention. Um, uh, sorry. Uh, MMO on console. Mm. So because the game, cause the game at face value is free to play, which is not normal for MMOs. MMOs, you need to pay to play. Yeah. Um, but what MMOs do for the paid subscription on console is they give you a bunch of in-game stuff, like more current, like monthly currency, um, more like resources. I'm petting my cat. Um, and then just more in-game stuff. Yeah. So that's kind of, again, that's how the kind of tier tiers work for those of you who've never played MMO on console or don't know how MMO kind of work like that when the base game is free. Yeah. Interesting stuff. Definitely. So we'll see, uh, you know, I'm curious to see what, you know, Elder Scrolls 6, yeah. as far as when that comes out. But yeah, but I, I, was, yeah, but I was just going to say, yeah, if you're nervous of getting into an online-only game because you're worried if the community is not there, because, you know, that's what kills an online-only game. No one fucking plays it. But no, <laughs> yeah. no, yeah. They, they mentioned, like, the recent concurrent players. It's, like, in the, it's still in the, like, millions, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, nice. it's, nice. it's, 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 a, it's, and it's a fun game. Awesome. Finding mechanic-wise. Awesome. Speaking of fighting mechanics, Hades uh, ah. coming out here uh, for the PC or, or Series uh, 1X uh, and going to be on Game Pass on the 13th of August, which is pretty awesome. Very excited to play this game. I haven't played it, but I know we got a lot of rewards uh, from the BAFTAs and, and everything. So very excited there. Um, uh, anything to say on that for we transition? I'm just looking for I'm just looking for playing with it. Um, yeah. Just because we have, I was like, oh wait, <laughs> they showed a lot of stuff about it, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want to go too much in everything. So sorry if I'm keeping your time. No, no, um, no. But um, but yeah, Hades, you know, had a had, had a ton of nominations during the Video Game Awards um, when it was a PC exclusive at the time, and it's coming. The fact it's, one, it's coming to Microsoft consoles. Two, the fact it's going to be a Game Pass. I will play it. Nice, very nice. Uh, and then also one of the biggest showings here for the the showcase was Halo Infinite. So Halo Infinite, once again, it looks really good. Yeah. Uh, I'm liking everything that I'm seeing so far. And they specifically emphasize the the, the term free to play. This is going to be on Xbox, uh, a Game Pass, yeah. uh, Game Pass. Uh, but I, I, I didn't get that square because they did not say a specific date. They just said holiday, holiday. 2021. I was like, yeah. son of a bitch. Which means happy birthday to me. <laughs> you know, it's gotta be November because traditionally Halo comes out in November. Yeah. Uh, they're celebrating their, what is it? 10 year anniversary. Microsoft selling it. It's celebrating its 20. Oh no, 20 year, 20 year anniversary. And I, Halo, I mean, Halo came out with it. Yeah. Yeah. 20 year anniversary. 
I, it was funny. I was just like, on, when I was on the stream, I was like, dude, Halo LAN parties, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I, and I was saying, man, we're old. We are way old, dude. We are way old. But I was going to do an educated guess here on when we could expect it. So it said holidays of 2021. I'm going to say November. Uh, let's see. Games come out on Friday now, right? Uh, yeah. uh, November 12th. I'm going to go the week before Black Friday and go 19th. Okay. That's smart. That's smart. Also, uh, my birthday is Cyber Monday. Yes. <laughs> I'm late yeah. November, so my birthday is always with always a handful of days around Black Friday. There you go. There you go. And this year it's on Cyber Monday. Hells yeah. Uh, one game that I wanted to talk about was Atomic Heart. So they yeah. showed another, tra- another teaser trailer for that. That game got announced three years ago and it's been in production hell since okay i can't say production hell because it hasn't like swapped people yeah but they're just taking their time dude like because it game looks amazing looks, it looks great it, it looks, looks like a, it looks like a like a re-envisioned like bioshock or something it looks like if bioshock took place in chernobyl yeah that's so great <laughs> I, I agree with that 100 percent. so yeah just in terms of aesthetics it's I remember the reveal trailer was like a mannequin fused with like 20 mannequins, but they were bleeding. And I was like, oh, yeah. Again, nope. But yeah. again, um, no, no date. No release date yet. So we will see what happens there. And then just for some honorable mentions, there's a Plague Tale Requiem, uh, which I thought looked pretty cool. Um, First game was good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Play, uh, Plague Tale. That's on. Uh, yeah, it's on Game Pass. OK, nice. Nice. Uh, Shredders, which is the other uh, cool borders <laughs> uh, snowboarding. snowboarding game uh, coming out. So that should be good. I'll definitely probably be checking that out. Uh, Slime Rancher 2, which is kind of like the, the chill, like... Uh, relaxing indie game. Yeah, relaxing kind of, indie it, game. It's kind of like a 3D, 3D version. It's like a 3D first person version of like a farming game. It's yeah. Like, it's like picture Stardew Valley, but it, you're the first person perspective of the farmer. Nice, nice. Uh, and they also have Replace Shooter, which I thought was uh, looked really cool. Sci-fi shooter or sci-fi like uh, adventure, action adventure yeah. game. That was really excited about that. Um, so that should be pretty dope. And then Grounded uh, releasing the Shroom and Groom update uh, June thirtieth. I love those trailers, man. That that narrator is cracking me up. Oh, this guy is funny. Do you want to know who makes? Do you want to know who makes uh, Grounded? Obsidian. Obsidian. Yeah. Yeah. Kill it again, dude. Killing it again, I'm telling you. Hey, this is insane stuff. Uh, Ascent, which I am excited for, supposed to be oh. a cyberpunkish type of uh, it, feel. It's a cyberpunkish top-down, yeah, four-person cooperative sh- uh, shooter. Yeah, on Game Pass. Uh, I'm just staring at it till July. 19th. You, you can pre- you can pre-download it now. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll think I'll to the that. scratch rich, you can pre- you can pre-download it right now. Oh, okay, I'm gonna do that definitely. Uh, and then Forza Horizon Five, of course. You know, I can't talk about an Xbox conference without mentioning Forza Horizon, and uh, looks beautiful. They're uh, gorgeous. Once I heard that guy say, "Oh yeah, we filmed 24 hours using a 12K camera," I'm like, "12K? God damn!" I remember when Forza <laughs> Horizon. Four or five, yeah, was shown. It took it took the viewers like a good minute to figure out because Forza because Forza usually shows real footage of stuff, right? And then their game to compare it. That's just what they do, right? But one of the years with four or five, they didn't tell you what they're showing, uh, and we were we all like for me, I thought it was real fucking footage of a race, and but it was their engine, mm. like their their car. Forza, it just in terms of looks, is a beautiful game. Yeah. And, you know, and in terms of DLC and play, and it, 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 just, to, you know, for those of you that have been on the fence for Horizon for Forza, just into racing game, it's not really your thing. It used to be with Need for Speed Heat, but now you don't really play racing games anymore. Give Forza a try. Yeah. I will also say their DLC stuff is really funny because it was shown at E3 like two years ago. Uh, do you remember, their, remember the DLC they announced two years ago? No, what was it? Lego. Oh, they had a bunch of Le- they, they, they had the Lego cars. They had oh, the Lego wow. cars. Uh, that was for Forza Horizon. So, just real quick, Forza, uh, Forza. So Forza games, just plain Forza, are there are the racing like heat track games. Forza Horizon is their open world map stuff. Hmm. So you like drive around, go to the here, go there. So Forza is more of a classic progress your progress in races to unlock stuff. 
uh, you know, just, you know, just match, 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 match. Whereas Horizon is the open world thing and you can go to stuff in whatever order you want. Right. So, right. so this is open world. Um, Did they give us a date on that? I don't remember. I don't remember. It's got to be this year, though. It yeah. seems like they're almost done with it. Yeah, it would look pretty fucking <laughs> done. Um, can I add something to yes. this Microsoft thing that was yeah. not during the conference, but it was announced an hour later? Did you, did you see the thing I tagged you on Facebook? I don't think so. Oh. So, an, so um, about a half an hour to an hour after Xbox's conference finished, it's real. It's happening. The Xbox fridge. Oh, no, I did. I yeah. did. Yeah. I was like, pre-order that because that's going to be gone. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love how they open up like during the commercial, the, the trailer for it. They say, yes, this is happening. Um, it's coming out uh, holidays. Uh, holidays. Mm. Uh, that I can tell you right now, um, regardless if I can get my whole, if regardless if I can get my hands on an Xbox Series X or not, I'm going to buy one. It, it, it just in terms of supply. Um, but that fridge will be a birthday present to myself. Nice. <laughs> I want that fucking mini fridge. They again, fuck dude, Microsoft, man, they turned into the swerve. They're like, it's yeah. a fridge. Fuck it. Make a fridge. <laughs> and guess what? People, people like me want it. Yeah. I want it. Not just as like, not like as like ironic, like, ha ha, they made a fridge. No, I fucking want it. I want, <laughs> I want an Xbox mini fridge in my house. Yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah, uh, kudos to you, man. I hope you get it. I hope you get it because that's gonna be, that's gonna be a big thing. And to Microsoft's fucking credit, it's quote the most powerful mini fridge. Because <laughs> if they're gonna, if Microsoft's gonna go in, they're gonna go in fucking hard. Oh my god, that's uh, hilarious. That is hilarious. It, it, oh my, what if it? I know it's not gonna have this, but what if it had a screen on the fridge so you could do Game Pass on it? I would love that because <laughs> that was the joke that fridges can play Game Pass games. <laughs> fridges can play Skyrim, um, but no. But I will say it does have even the the disc, the, that vertical disc tray. Oh shit! Like it just straight up looks. Yeah, no, they made the console. Like that's awesome. aesthetically wise, it's the console. Yeah, but it's the fridge. Yeah, that's awesome. And because uh, that that was the joke. Do you want to buy? Do you want to buy the PlayStation router or the or the Microsoft fridge? And I'll tell you this: Sony ain't no Sony ain't making no fucking router. <laughs> but guess what? Microsoft making that fridge. Hell yeah, hell yeah. And and honestly, dude, like to me, like to wrap up the the segment, like they did such a good job here, and it's such a testament to like. Like a reason why like Sony should have been here. Like honest, like even if they yeah. gave even if they gave like a D effort and release games or talked about games that we already know about, like they were the fastest selling console last year. Like to your point, like that you mentioned in a couple episodes ago. It was just like there's there's no reason for them not to be here. They could have flexed opinion. that. They, they could have they could have flexed the console war and be like, We're winning. Yeah. <laughs> but no. And now you're gonna fucking lose. Um but, but again, you know, this, the, the, so so far, half as we speak, halfway through three, this has been the only conference that cared to fucking do its job. Ubisoft didn't. Gearbox didn't know what the fuck to do. They were like, okay, let's have a forty-five minute conference. You couldn't even fucking do that. It was yeah. half an hour. Yeah. Uh, Ubisoft killed time via screensavers of people walking forward. Yeah. Um. And no. And here's the again, again. So my again, something I would have failed in predicting, like to a point I did. I said, watch, we're gonna get a lot of delayed games, but no, there's a lot of confirmed dates. A lot of confirmed for dates. this year. Yeah, yeah. Some of which for this fucking month. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah. I was thoroughly, imp I was thoroughly impressed. Yeah. With yeah. with Microsoft this year, I again. Now, in terms of major, the big three, Nintendo, Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo's left. <laughs> I'm whispering to myself, I'm mumbling to myself because that's, I'm whispering to myself Tuesday, 8 a.m. Pacific time. <laughs> I will watch the recording of it. Yeah, seriously, um, seriously. But I don't think, I mean, Nintendo's Nintendo. So, it's, again, to a point, Nintendo conferences are never I don't want to say on par with Xbox or Sony, but because it, it's like oh, it's almost like their customer basis is different. They know it, and they yeah. and they don't 
and they're not bashful, we don't give a fuck. We're we're going to be different. Yeah. And again, to again, it's worked. True. So very true. So one, I'm expecting to be in the, the Nintendo conference to be very different. Um, and because that different, I don't think it's going to do as well as as Microsoft. But again. It, they could be in Nintendo and be like, hey, that different really, really, really works for them. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think that's a great point. Great point. Uh, and to wrap up the show here, I thought it'd be good for us to shit on this. Um, <laughs> so Square Enix had their event. Uh, we're recording this on, on Sunday, obviously. So the, the event happened not too long ago. Uh, but for the Marvels, the, the biggest thing was that, oh, we have a big event, a big surprise for you guys. You know, Marvel's the big event for you guys. And it was the Guardians of the Galaxy, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. So it was a full, dedicated, standalone game, specifically with Guardians of the Galaxy. A standalone game? And, oh, God. And, man, if you saw those YouTube comments, dude, people were like, what the fuck? Like, the problem with, like, it just looks like it's a game that was forced to be made. Yeah. It seemed very rushed. None of the original uh, folks from the movie are doing any voice acting in it. it, like, it if you're, if you're going to make an Avengers game following the Avengers movie and not have the actors in it, like the licenses, yeah. what are you doing? Like, like, like yeah. again, they're like arguably to a point, their faces, their performances is what made that 10 years of that Marvel universe. Oh, crazy billion multi-billion dollar success yeah and to say that we're just gonna have generic face number one as captain america generic face number two as iron man and then beyond that have a game just mechanically just mechanic wise that isn't that fun <laughs> like i show i think i showed you a screenshot um the player count for marvel avengers has hit zero multiple fucking times wow multiple times and again, I compare that to stuff like Elder Scrolls Online that's come out three years, you know, that came out years ago. That's still doing great, and for some fucking reason, people are still playing Fallout 76. So, yeah, if you have yeah. if you have a player base small in Fallout 76, you fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Then um, you know, there's Babylon's Fall. I guess that was coming to PS5 uh, for the Marvel's Avengers. Since we're talking about that, Black Panther is going to be a uh, DLC expansion for that, which is cool, but unfortunately it's attached to a game that isn't as cool. Um, and, uh, that pretty much wraps up so far, you know, of what we've gathered. We wanted to come together to, to share with the, yeah. the masses on, on E3. So like you said, Arthur, uh, I mean, if if, Mar if Microsoft wasn't there, it would have been an ultimate failure. <laughs> Dude, it's so bad. Like, so like, I haven't seen it, but from what you told me, Square Enix dropped a ball. Um, now, mind you, we're skipping over the PC thing. On oh PC. yeah, the PC game show, yeah. and then the future game show, or something like that. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, but uh, predictions. Um, the E three. Uh, why the E three game awards are going to exist? I don't know. Um, and uh, and Phil Spencer, congratulations on what I'm going to bet of sweeping the fucking board. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. Congrats to you. Congrats to you, Phil. I mean, Jesus. You just got to do it. Congrats. Microsoft Showcase. That is how you do a showcase. Thank you for teaching everybody how to do a showcase. I, you know, I'm openly biased. I'm an uh, Xbox guy, though. I'm, con I'm, con I'm constructive of them when they need to be. I mean, like with the whole you know, quiet Game Pass price update, which they've mainly fixed. Um, but again, you know, compare this to the blue Sony people. <laughs> I, I am highly critical of Sony. I'm a Sony boy to heart, but they, they have to fix their strategy, what they're doing right now. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense given. And, and then also, you know, the main argument uh, before we wrap up here is that Microsoft is Microsoft, right? So Microsoft is one of the biggest yeah. companies in the world. Uh, and they have the cachet, they have the money, the investment, to get this large market share and to take a bunch of games at a loss, they have the capital to do that, yeah. uh, which Sony does not, obviously. But Sony needs to do something, something to to just make a things to make a little more sense uh, compared to what they've done. Uh, so we'll see, man. You uh, mean you mean their AI isn't the next step? <laughs> To make games easier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. More than the games, playing the games for you. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I hope Jim Ryan, you know, or uh, I hope he, I mean, I, I know he's not. Well, like I said, I want him to step down because that's something he's a good fit for the Sony president. But um, 
Yeah, we'll see, man. You know what's funny? I found out that Shuhei, he's the head of indie games. Yeah. So he's 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 got nothing to do. <laughs> <Poor guy. laughs> like what indie games are you thinking? Dude, I still can't believe in 2021 how uh, Sony is still openly fucking against cross-platform. Yeah. Publicly. Yeah, and Publicly. Even, yeah, and even Gearbox was like, yeah, like we could have we had cross their burdens, but fuck. And then even yeah. with that, even with Fortnite, like, yeah, they yeah. need to get the shit. I feel like, I feel bad when like developers or publishers have to answer Sony questions on behalf of their customers. So a lot of Sony people are upset Borderlands isn't cross play for, for Sony. And like I don't, I don't know if there's any pitch for it, but someone at Gearbox was like yeah. Yeah, we would have loved that, but Sony <laughs> Sony doesn't want cross platform for Borderlands. So yeah. sorry. <laughs> yeah. Take notes, Sony. Take notes. All right, folks. Well, that is going to wrap up mm. uh the E3 show here for the Games for Life podcast each and every Saturday discussing all things games. Uh so definitely looking forward to uh what happens here. And then uh, you know, it's possible we may produce an episode on Saturday, just depends on the news. Yeah, oh. depends, depends on the second half of E3, you know, if Nintendo, and then, you know, kind of like the fallout from E3, or if there'll be like a news break. Yeah. Um, there's yeah, a few exactly. st- there's a few stories that are broke that we think we need coverage, but again, whether it's a whole episode or not, we'll see. Yeah, definitely, definitely. All right, guys, well, uh, thank you so much. Have a good rest of your week, and we may see you on Saturday. Uh, yeah. Yep. Thanks. Bye.